What's up, Kings fans? We're here. We're drinking beers. And we're talking about your Sacramento Kings. What up, Kings fans? Welcome back to another Royal Rebounds podcast. The number one Sacramento Kings podcast on YouTube. If you would like to join the Royal family, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. If you enjoy this content, make sure you hit that like button. And if you would like to find out when Calvin and I put out a new video, make sure you hit that cow bell down below. Yeah, hit it like hella times. Hella times. All right, Calvin, so uh, what are we uh, drinking today? Well, today we are drinking the Dragon's Tooth Stout from Elysian Brewing Company. Wow. One of very nice favorite breweries. Uh, we love Space Dust and a lot of their beers that they produce. This is a nice chocolatey stout. Delicious, it is it not? It is delicious. I could, uh, I think I could have a car bomb or two with these. Yeah, yeah, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. <laughs> so welcome back to the Royal Rebounds Podcast. Today, we're talking about preseason predictions. We're in this sort of dead space here in the off season. The draft has happened, free agency is technically not over, but most of the free agents out there have chosen to sign with new teams. So now the look is to, Summer League is over, the look is to the beginning of the season, training camp, preseason, regular season, and today we're going to talk about some predictions that have come out around the league um, for a variety of different things. Odds makers have listed their favorites to win the championship. And we're going to talk about some, some preseason predictions for our Sacramento Kings. That's right. We're talking about some bullshit here. <laughs> we got Draft Kings. Y'all better change your name. Draft Queens or Draft whatever you want because I am not happy with you. 36 and a half wins over under for the Kings this season. Come on, man. Come on, man is right. We got to take the over. I got to take the Easy over. money that right now, That is right? ridiculous. And the odds, the Kings winning the championship is a plus 25,000. That is crazy. Calvin and I are going to put some money uh, right after this podcast. We're going to put some money on the Kings winning the championship because that's how real of fans we are. Right, Cal? That's right. Absolutely. They are projected the 11th seed for this upcoming season, which is actually an improvement over last year as they were the 12th seed. Um, they have them finishing over the Oklahoma City Thunder, Houston Rockets, San Antonio Spurs, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. I don't know if I agree with that ranking, um, but Calvin, let's, let's hear what you have to say. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that ranking either. Once you get into that 10, the playoff, uh, or the play-in tournament seed range, it gets very jumbled and very complicated, especially in the Western Conference. But we said it on a previous podcast, I would put money on the Kings to finish no worse than the ninth or 10th seed and make that play-in tournament. I think 7-8 is definitely possible, somewhere in that range. Well, we're putting money on them to win the championship. We are putting money on them to win the championship because how can you beat those odds? 25,000 <laughs> to one, right? You know, the Kings have hovered around this 10th, 11th, 9th seed for the last couple of seasons. Uh, we have talked about it ad nauseum, about how they've made great improvements to the roster. They've drafted well the last two years. They've now made some moves in free agency. They've re-signed Rashawn Holmes. This team feels like it's on the way up. Now, yes, I realize there are some other teams in the Western Conference that also feel like that. New Orleans is one for sure that's going to be jockeying with the Kings all season long. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know what the Warriors are going to do necessarily. They were part of the play-in tournament last year. There, it's no secret that there's a lot of competition out there in the Western Conference, but 11th feels like it's too low for me, for the Kings. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. Uh, we're going to jump in here into um, off-season rankings here in a little bit. But you look at the Sacramento Kings – they didn't make a big splash this year in free agency, but they are one of the youngest teams in the league. They are developing players. They are staying consistent. We didn't switch coaches this offseason. We didn't switch yep. front offices. We pretty much maintained the same core and added to that. We brought back right. Rashawn Holmes. We uh, got a steal in the draft at Donovan Mitchell. 
And the rest of the team is, has kind of uh, been coming along. We're keeping the consistency there. So, you know, I think they're going to do much better than 11th. I think that they will actually be in the 8th or 7th spot once the play-in tournament comes along this season. Um, but as you mentioned, I say no no worse than 9 or 10, right? Yeah, I, I think that's a very safe prediction for this team. You know, if you're going to continue to get better and improve, like you mentioned, they have a young roster, but the core of this team has played together for a few years now. Every one of their major players, including Harrison Barnes, who is one of the oldest players on this team, has gotten better over the past couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. You can argue that Harrison Barnes had the best year of his career last year. And Harrison Barnes is not old. He's not, but he's one of the oldest players on this team. Yeah. He's a veteran on this particular team. But Rashawn Holmes had a career year last year. De'Aaron Fox had a career year mm -hmm. last year. There's no reason to expect that Tyrese Halliburton won't be better than he was last year, and he was very good already. Uh, and they've continued to fill out the roster around those major pieces. Having Davion Mitchell in there is, is only going to help. It still remains to be seen what the Ben Simmons situation is like. We're going to talk about that a little bit here on this podcast as well, but... But yeah, 11th is too low for this team, for sure. Yeah, yeah 11th is way I mean, too the, low. The expectations is playoffs. That, that's what the expectations Definitely. are, for sure. So The Kings don't make the playoffs. There's going to be a lot of pissed Kings fans. And I know you could say that every year, but I feel like this year is a little bit different. Yep. We have some consistency. We have some continuity. Players are getting better. De'Aaron Fox is... is He's on his way, man. He, he's got to be an all-star this year. He's no longer a star in the making. He has the respect of, of his peers in the league, the coaching staff all around the league, uh, and the fans. So yeah. he, he a star is born. He, he's here. He's arrived. I agree. So moving on here, uh, David Aldridge of The Athletic ranked the Kings as the 29th worst offseason this year in the NBA, only ahead of the Timberwolves. 30th, um, and Calvin, as we had been talking about earlier, the Timberwolves did not have a, a draft pick or a first-round first draft round pick, pick in this year's draft. They didn't make many moves. They lost Ricky Rubio. Yep. They the lost Kings, Jared Culver. Yeah, the Kings, uh, I know they didn't have a home run off season like maybe the Lakers had the past two seasons, but 29th? Come on. So this is ridiculous, first of all. I, I'm very, very unhappy with this ranking. Tell I'm, all, you really I'm feel also Kyle. very unhappy with this the idea that this is a ranked list in general. This is a very arbitrary thing to me. Plus, there's no real way to tell what the criteria is for making this list, right? You've got a team, for example, like the Atlanta Hawks. They signed Trey Young to a max contract. They did draft Jalen Johnson, who showed out in Summer League. They're very happy about that. But other than that, and they re-signed John Collins. But other than that, they didn't make any major additions to this roster. It's basically like bringing the band back mm -hmm. together. So, yes, it's a good move to sign Trey Young to a max contract, but does that mean that you had a better offseason than some of these other teams that are, are adding new pieces and trying to, to make the puzzle fit together? You know, that that's what I mean by how do you really come up with this list. But I, I do have a a few teams here that I think I would definitely put Sacramento's offseason above already. Number one would be the Denver Nuggets. I really like them drafting Nashawn Hyland. He's going to serve them very, very well while Jamal Murray is out recovering from the ACL tear. But other than that, they, they brought in Jeff Green, who I do love, great mm -hmm. player. Other than that, there's no real major difference to this roster. So I don't know how you can say that they had a better offseason than the Kings who made a bunch of moves and drafted higher in a higher position and, in my opinion, a better player. In my opinion, <laughs> David Aldridge is the second worst uh, writer <laughs> in the league. Maybe tied for the worst. Maybe he can have the worst and second worst together. But come on, David, come on. No, th this is ridiculous. Utah Jazz, again, re-signed Mike Conley, was one of the biggest free agents out there on the market. Very important move. Don't get me wrong on that. It's a major, major move. But outside of that, what did this team do to get better? They were already the number one seed in the Western Conference last year. Drafted Jared Butler, mm -hmm. Davion Mitchell's teammate. Good player. I really like that pick. 
But outside of that, they didn't really make any major additions to this team. So how can you say they had a better offseason than the Kings? And to clarify, offseason does not matter how good your team was last right. year. Right. This is building off of your team, exactly. how much your team is going to get better. So even if your team was the worst team in the league last year, if you had a better offseason than a team that made the playoffs, you should be theoretically higher on this list, right? I Absolutely. I agree with that. This is all, the, the NBA Finals are over. Last season doesn't matter anymore. It's what have you done from the, the day the season ended until now to improve your team, yeah. right? And guess what, David? The off season is not over yet. It's not over. So your rankings might be a little early, especially considering the fact that mybookie.com has the Sacramento Kings rated as the favorites to land you-know-who. Ben Simmons. Thank you for the segue, because one of the teams that I have in here as not having a better offseason than the Kings would be the Philadelphia 76ers. They signed Andre Drummond, mm -hmm. which in a normal Dwight setting, Howard. you would say, that's a great move. Andre Drummond and Joel Embiid have had a huge beef for the past three or four seasons. How are they going to coexist on the same team together? Other than that, they didn't bring anybody else in. And if you are expecting to get rid of Ben Simmons, that doesn't seem like a good offseason to me. It does not. And you look at who they lost. Dwight Howard. Yep. Season before, Lakers had Dwight Howard win a championship. Yep. Then what happens? Dwight Howard leaves, they get Drummond, lost in the first round. <laughs> they sure did. So, and they, Sixers are effing up. They did some other stuff. They re-signed Danny Green, which, you know, I'm sure they're happy they about. They need shooting. They need shooting. They need defense. But outside of that, again, no major changes to this team. Uh, and with the prospect of losing Ben Simmons, I just don't see how you can say they're having a better offseason than the Kings. Another team, Dallas Mavericks. Didn't make any major additions. They brought in J.J. Redick. They need shooting. They re-signed Tim Hardaway J.J. Redick that is considering retirement. Exactly, that's considering <laughs> retirement. Has a fantastic podcast himself that he's doing really well on. Brought in Reggie Bullock. Those are the only major changes they made to this roster. And then my last team would be the San Antonio Spurs, who drafted Joshua Primo in the first round. Solid player, but I thought it was a bit of a reach at that position. Other than that, they lost DeMar DeRozan. Mm -hmm. They have a kind of an identity crisis going on with this team. They brought in Zach Collins, mm -hmm. a guy who is very rarely healthy and they doesn't lost play very much. Aldridge. I know that was lost late Aldridge. last season, but yep. still, they didn't replace him. They added guys like Doug McDermott, Thaddeus Young, who are serviceable players, but Thaddeus Young is going to be making $14.2 on this team next year. Doug McDermott's going to be making $13.8 on this team next year. This, to me, seems like a worse roster than the Kings have. How do they have a better offseason than Sacramento? How old is Thaddeus Young now? Because I remember he was the last piece with the Sixers 33 years before old. the process started, right? Yeah. He was the last guy to go before the process started. So 33 years old. And he's making how much? $14.2 million wow. next year. That is crazy. So, David... Uh, we just blew up your list. Yeah, we just blew up your list, I guess. All right, so we're going to move on to the, the Ben Simmons deal. I know we've been talking a lot about Ben Simmons. Some Kings fans are uh, tired of the Ben Simmons rumors. Others are very hopeful that maybe he could bring a Chris Webber-type presence to this team and help uh, inject some more energy and youth. Remember, Ben Simmons is still a pretty young guy. so Very young. He does have a lot to bring to the table. Let's, let's talk a little bit about Ben Simmons. But before we do that, I just want to break down this list from mybookie.com. It has the Kings as the favorites to land Ben Simmons at uh, plus 275. Second is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Third is the Warriors. Then they have the Blazers, the Spurs, and the Wizards. I know if I'm Ben Simmons, I'm hoping for only one team on that list, and that's probably <laughs> the Warriors. Probably the least most likely to happen. Um, but I, I honestly still think Ben could bring a lot to this franchise. Oh, without a doubt, he could. He would bring a lot to any of those franchises, no matter where he went. It still feels weird to me that there is such this negative cloud around him. 
uh, you know, he's a tremendous, tremendous player. He really is. And he will change any of those franchises that he goes to. Maybe the Warriors, you can argue that it's not a huge change because they have this major culture of winning in the last seven years. But any of these teams would be incredibly lucky and happy to have Ben Simmons. You make a great point in that the longer this goes on, the less likely Philadelphia is to get the deal that they want in return, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that the team who's listed as the odds-on favorite to win Ben Simmons in a deal has the upper hand in negotiations, which would be the Kings. For me, I would love to have Ben Simmons on the Kings, but I'm not going to give up. I'm definitely not giving up De'Aaron Fox or Tyree Saliburton. Mm -hmm. Davion Mitchell is a question mark for me. I'm not sure whether... I would want yeah. to give him up right now. It would con- I would have to consider the rest of the package. You know, they're both tremendous defenders, so you you it's not like you would be really losing too much from a defensive standpoint in either one of those cases. Davion Mitchell's a lot cheaper though than he Ben is. Simmons is. He, he can shoot a lot better. He doesn't feel than that Ben salary. Simmons can. Yeah. So th- this is a tough one. A tough one for me. It, it would really depend on what the uh, specifications are of the deal yeah and you know looking at these teams here i don't know if philadelphia is going to get a better package than buddy healed marvin bagley and a couple first round picks i'm yeah. sure minnesota is the wild card for me in this scenario because what's minnesota going to give up to get are they willing to give up d'angelo russell because if they can that that would be a scenario where yeah. you'd have a better package that way He's, he's definitely the best player um, that I think Philadelphia could get in that package. Yeah. But at Outside the same of De'Aaron time, Fox. But. Yeah, yeah, well, he's not available. Yeah. But at the same time, D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns are supposed to be best buds. Right. And Towns wanted D'Angelo Russell to come to Minnesota. I know yeah. they wanted Devin Booker, too, and yeah. probably last season might have derailed their plans. I think that's over. A For little now. bit. For a now. little bit. If I'm Cat and they trade D'Angelo Russell... I probably want to get out of Minnesota too. So yeah. if they're uh, ready to blow it all up, maybe they do that move. But I see a, a most, more likely move with Sacramento trading a Buddy Heald, a Marvin Bagley, a couple first-round picks. It's been proven the Kings can't, can't make the playoffs. So you got to feel that their picks yeah. are a little bit more valuable than some of these other franchises. Unfortunately, the Kings haven't won the lottery like Minnesota has. Yeah. <clears throat> Consistently, they have been the worst team over the last 15 years. So I, I really don't know where Philadelphia goes from this point. They've alienated Ben Simmons. I, I don't know if this fractured relationship can be fixed. As we mentioned before, Daryl Morey has a great relationship with Monty McNair, our current general manager. So... A deal there would be pretty easy to pull off. We know they're very comfortable working together. But it all comes down to Daryl Morey, right? And what he's yeah. willing to accept for this for this guy. Yeah. And what a difference a year makes too, right? Because this is so different from the James Harden situation. You've got so an much all-star. Both of these guys, all-stars, who are no longer satisfied with their current teams. But... In Harden's situation, he was the one that that came and said, I don't want to be here anymore. In Philadelphia, it seems like the opposite. Yeah. I, I never heard Ben Simmons say, I don't want to be here anymore, until he learned that they wanted to get rid of him. Yeah. You know? And as a Kings fan, that's actually exciting for me. Because if I'm bringing in another player, especially a high-risk guy like Ben Simmons... I, you know, I would have loved to have Jimmy Butler on the team, but I, I was kind of afraid to bring Jimmy Butler in because I didn't think he'd be happy in Sacramento. But yeah. a guy like Ben Simmons, who hasn't complained about his role, hasn't complained about being in Philadelphia this whole time, Yeah, he doesn't seem like a guy that would come to Sacramento and, and want out. So Sacramento has been known for one thing, and that's fans embracing players, no matter the outcome. So I think Ben Simmons, if he came to Sacramento and, and he uh, wore his heart on the sleeve, the, the fan base would welcome him, and, and he'd be happy to be on this team. Kind of similar to what right. happened to Chris Webber. Yeah, yeah, very similar. 
But again, it's it's all about what are you going to give up for him? You know, no, I don't think anybody would have questioned having to give up a lot for a guy like James Harden, but you are questioning what you have to give up for Ben Simmons. And it, it's tough because he brings so much to the table in terms of of playmaking, uh, you know, vision, passing, and defense. But having that guy who can't hit free throws in the playoffs and can't be relied on to get his own shot, it, it changes things from a GM's perspective. You can't make the playoffs. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> That's, that is true. I, I, I feel like uh, you got to hit each milestone before you start looking ahead. You know, you can't be working mm-hmm. on the roof or thinking about the roof of your house when you're still building the foundation. Yeah. yeah. And Ben Simmons is part of that foundation. So you bring yeah. him to this team, you create that foundation, and then you worry about your roof once once you get there. Right. But And one of the biggest knocks against Davion Mitchell in the whole draft process was free throws. Yeah. He struggled mightily in college shooting free throws. Mm-hmm. Below 65% last year. So... Yeah, all, all good points. I want to remind you all to please like this video. Please share this video with other Kings fans. Calvin and I love to talk about the Sacramento Kings. We love to have you here. Uh, we feel like this platform is, is for you, for the Kings fans. We want your voices to be heard. Let us know down below in the comments how you feel about all these, uh, how you feel about Ben Simmons coming to the Kings, and how you feel about... Uh, Draft Kings and David Aldridge putting some more FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt on your Sacramento Kings. And who knows, if you have a good comment down below, Cal and I might talk about you in the next podcast. That's right. Well, we want to thank you all for joining us for another podcast on Royal Rebounds TV. We'll see you all next time. And in the meantime, go Kings! Go Kings!